All right, so we're given some information, just some dudes running, and we're clocking his time. Uh, and my time actually is in minutes. Okay, so that's going to become important that this is in minutes. So every 15 minutes, we're checking his speed. Well, in class today, we said when we did a lower estimate, we picked this value on the left. Well, you don't do that on this one, and you're going to see why. So in class, our function actually was increasing. If I pick values to the left and I draw my rectangles, you can certainly see that is going to be lower because it is below my graph. But if I have a function that is decreasing, notice what happens when I draw my rectangles to the left. Actually, that's an upper estimate. So if I pick that first value 0 and it's going down, that's going to be an upper estimate. So you have to be careful with these. Students will either memorize that if it's increasing, then the first value in the table is used. If it's decreasing, then you use the next value over. So in this case, if I want to find the first question, just ask for the first 30 minutes, so then the lower, since this is decreasing, would be 11 times the width of the interval, and you might want to say times 15. However, notice this is in hours, miles per hour, so I have to change that 15 over 60, okay, to get that in hours, and then plus the next one, 10 times 15 over 60, and you should get your answer. And so in this case, a lower, again, based by looking at the graph that it's decreasing, I would actually start one value over. Okay, so I'm actually starting here one value over. And so then the upper, in this case, would start at your first value, 16 and 15 over 60. And then your next one, 11 and 15 over 60. So, so this is why it's important to either graph the data to see why, when it's decreasing, where do you start a lower and an upper estimate. Or, again, you remember the difference between decreasing and increasing, which table values to pick.